Hello everybody. This is Dr. A. Welcome back to History Surfer. I'm making this voice recording because part of my video, you know, I had some technical difficulties with. So I am doing this so that you can understand what I was saying. Anyway, I am standing in front of Longwood. And Longwood was a plantation built outside. It's just really considered part of Natchez. But it is in uh, this kind of isolated spot today, it seems like. Anyway, it was on a very big piece of land at one point. But it was built by Haller Nutt. So let me just tell you a little bit about it while I'm standing here in front of it. It's a really cool house. And I am an architectural historian. You know, I specialize in Caribbean and Bahamian architecture, especially Bahamian and then Florida architecture. But places like this are so unique, you have to almost see them. Um, it was the, when, when it was the shell was completed, it was considered the largest octagonal house in America. And Haller Nutt built it in a style that the architect called Oriental. Oriental Villa, it was called, but it has influences from the Byzantine with the cupola on the top. It is a really fascinating structure. The history of it is equally as fascinating. So briefly, started in 1860. If you know anything, that's a bad time for anything in the South. Haller Nutt was a cotton and sugar planter. Most of his land was in Louisiana, but he did have some land in Mississippi. But he built this house for his wife, who was, who loved this area. And when he started it, he hired a northern architect from Pennsylvania named Samuel Sloan. He was a popular mid-century architect. And when the construction began, the design included 32 rooms, 8 verandas, 4 porches, 115 doors, 26 fireplaces, 24 closets, and this rotunda that opened to a Moorish cupola. That's a crazy large house, 30,000 square foot. Well, you know, those of you who know history, what happens in 1861. Civil War. The Civil War, the workers who had come down with Sloan's uh, company were 70 of them. They left. They just left. The house is incomplete. It remains standing only because Haller Nutt was a union sympathizer. Many of the cotton planters in this area, believe it or not, were sympathizers with the union. Many of them were northerners. I think Haller Nutt's family actually came from Virginia. But anyway, enjoy. And I will talk to you later. I'm going to talk low because there's a tour going on, but that's up underneath the dome. This is the second floor, what would be called the first floor actually. And it, as you see, was never completed. I'll talk about it more from the outside. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And um, these things let light into the basement floor. Cemetery for Longwood, because I just love to see these little private cemeteries. It's not too far of a walk, honestly. If you're even somewhat athletically inclined, you don't have to be big. It's not a huge hike. So we're coming up to it. All of the members of the family are buried here, except one of the sons who actually fought in World War I, Prentice Nutt, and he is buried in Arlington Cemetery. So here they all are, and it's amazing. If you look at, you know, I love to come to these kind of places. This is the family. The father's name, it was Haller, and you can see him right there in the middle. Um, oh no, this must have been another later, because he died right, yeah, he died earlier than that, so this must have been a grandson. Yep, it would have been, the dates are wrong. Sorry, I thought it was on there, but here you see all the graves, 
for all the children, all the parents. Oh, there it is. That's Hollernet. Yeah, that's the right one. He's the one who was the builder of the house. And he died, you can see, right before the war ended. The Civil War ended in 1864. And there's his wife, Julia, who kept the family running by growing vegetables after the end of the Civil War and feeding the family with a vegetable farm. And then she would take them into Natchez and sell them at the market. Must have been uh, a struggle for her.